So the idea behind this clock method is that we're going to use it to completely eliminate all D moves, seven simul or with flip. Um, and it also is going to improve ergonomics. We're really only doing one regular up and that's the flip in this. Uh, the idea behind it is basically to combine the two best aspects of seven simul and flip um, by of course using simultaneous moves to do two moves at once and solve more pieces in the same amount of time, which is good. Um, but also with the just generally better turning and ergonomic feel as Flip does, because Seven Simul can definitely get a little awkward with its turning sometimes. That's why you see solved with so few TPS and why people are getting like uh, the world class people are getting uh, like averaging three with Seven Simul wooden with like the three four TPS that world class solvers with Flip can get. Like that's <laughs> it's like one second averages. Um, so this method attempts to get a good amount of both worlds and try and get the best aspects of each. So we're going to do, um, actually the scramble has solved stuff and I want to do an unlucky scramble. Let's just do random moves until it looks very scrambled. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Um, random pins, I don't know. So we're going to start uh, by just taking the side that we're going to solve on, immediately flipping, and we're going to do a little bit of counting, just it's four numbers, they're very stupid easy. Um, you could do a fifth one too, which is a little bit more complicated, but I don't really care. Um, it's kind of half intuitive, so whatever. Um, the first number we're going to memorize is R to U, and that's going to be negative one in this case, which is A, then we do U to C, which is five. That's all we do on that side. Um, and on this side, literally the exact same thing. <laughs> R to U, that's negative three, that's C. Then U to C, which is negative one, that's A. So we had A, five, C, A, A, five, C, A. Um, and the optional fifth number that you can memorize is going to be the AUF for this side. Um, you can do that by just um, seeing what you need to do to C to match with L. In this case, it would be negative two. And then we're gonna apply that to R. That's gonna bring that to seven o'clock. And so we'd need to do five to solve it. So you could memorize five as your last digit. Uh, let's see, A5, C, A, and then optionally five. Our exec is gonna start with the face we started on. Uh, we're going to use UR to match the center clock with D. Uh, and that's all we do for our first move. We don't do any simul moves. Second one, we are going to do simul moves, and it's going to be that uh, first number we memorized, which was A. <laughs> I'm just doing this for the sake of example. I didn't actually memorize them too much. Um, I literally came up with this today. <laughs> um, but the second move, when the pin's up, we're also going to make this block right here. Um, and now for our third move on this side, we're going to do all but UL. With this sand, we're going to match the right clock to up. That's what you'd need the fifth number for. Um, it was what? It was five. Five on this side. And that's what we're going to do with our left hand. And then when we flip, we should have this bit solved. That's how you know you did it right. And we're going to do the exact same thing on this side. It was a CA in this case, right? Yes, it was. Um, so yeah, we're going to just solve R so that we have these four solved. Push all the pins up. C on this side, and then match the cross, all but UL. This is the trickiest move right here, um, because you're doing one simul move and also kind of like figuring out where to put these five clocks at the same time. I guess you could just do the AUF and then just start on whatever pin order you have, but it seems pretty inefficient to me to do that instead of just, you know, solving a corner in the same move as doing something else um but i mean you do you if that ends up being faster then so be it but i do think that's going to be the better way to do it but then after that uh you'll have at most three corners left to solve um and it's, you'll have auf for this face i just got lucky on this case um and then it should be solved uh this is still kind of in the works theoretically i don't know if this is actually going to be a good method for speed solving although i have gotten some decent times on it already um, it, I do think it definitely has potential It incorporates some of the better liked aspects of, um, both methods. And there's kind of been this 
discourse for forever about which method is better, so why not use the best of both worlds? Oh, goodness, it's falling. 